um, you know, our deputies responded um, to check the well-being uh, and, and began the documentation and began collecting the information they needed uh, to continue with the investigation. Like I said, uh, she was put into the system as missing uh, at 1.30, and uh, you know, we worked um, all weekend long, uh, identified the suspect um, with, with all those facts involved, and continue our investigation uh, and, and until we found her um, you know, this, this past weekend. Sheriff sure, I Mina, mean, uh, Curtis McLeod with Section News 13. Did the deputy on the scene who actually had contact with Caballero, did he contact a supervisor after he came in contact with him? Yeah, and this that's all part of the investigation. We're gonna look into exactly you know, who was notified, when they were notified, and you know what more could have been done. And so, you know, again, I do have to go back to the fact that unfortunately all, all these things that we're talking about uh, wouldn't have um, uh, you know, prevented anything. She was already left dead at Timberscan Apartments before we were ever called. And you know, I know um, as a parent myself, I, I would feel um, so upset, and, and I would I would want all these answers, and I would want to place blame. You know, the person responsible for Mia's death is Armando Caballero, and all the although the investigation still continues, um, he he is the only person responsible for her death. What have you been able to find about the circumstances? What exactly happened? And right now, does evidence show that she may have left her apartment alive? So that again, that's part of the you know the information that we're trying to to ascertain, and, and the reason we're continuing our investigation at, at this point, we just don't know yet. Sure, I know you mentioned this when we first started the press conference, but can you talk to me a little bit about your thoughts on the video that you saw from family members based off of you seeing that video? Do you believe there was probable cause to detain Camero based off of reviewing that video? Right. So in in reviewing the video, um, you definitely have some upset family members um, who are asking some heated questions. Uh, to Caballero, the deputy is there. Uh, it appears to be taking um, information um, from Caballero, uh, but there, there's not enough there in that video or enough there that happened um, that night for uh, probable cause to make arrest or or any anything to establish any facts that you know this person has to be detained. You know, unfortunately, um, you know I've been doing this for 30 years. We we talk to suspects all the time, and we know they're the person. We know they did it, and um, you know sometimes even months later we know they're still the suspect. Um, but we need to build a case. We need to investigate. We need to have all these facts that you see up here before we can actually you know make an arrest and i again i do understand you know being a parent myself that you know it's hard uh i can only imagine what they're going through and it, you know they want answers and you know unfortunately uh, the, the two people that have the most answers in this case armando caballero and mia marcano are not with us and we can't get some of those answers right now, but I'm confident our detectives will be able to find out as much as they possibly can about this case and let everyone know uh, as much as possible. Sheriff, what do you know about obsessive texts between uh, Caballero and Marcano, like we heard in that video, and were there, in fact, from what we've been told, bruises on Caballero and scratches during that initial interaction? Yeah, so, you know, uh, I've been told that, you know, there, there was some communication, and like I said, in that first um, press conference that uh, obviously uh, he had some type of romantic interest uh, in her. And, you know, um, I, I think as far as the the scratches and the bruises, you know, I don't know how visible, you know, that those that those were. But again, um, that alone doesn't, you know, lead up to, to probable cause uh, for an arrest. Yeah, what about the fact that the family also say they then followed Caballero to his apartment and saw what they believed was her belongings in his person. Right, and so we, you know, they did contact uh, Casper Police Department. They they did go in his apartment. Caballero let them into the to their apartment. You know, shortly there after that, we did obtain a search warrant um, uh, to search his his place as well. What did you say to the family? Because I think their feeling right now is that if the Orange County Sheriff's Office maybe would have done even just a little bit more, they would have been able to find Mia's body earlier than, you know, a week and a day after it happened. Well, I would say, uh, again, those are all things uh, that, we're, that we're looking into. 
you know, what, what was done early on, maybe what could have been done uh, more. And again, you know, the person responsible for the death uh, of Mia is Armando Caballero. And unfortunately, um, you know, she was dead um, before he ever received that call. But I do understand, you know, uh, uh, the, the family's concerns. And so we'll be looking into all that. The family attorney has said that the roommate was let in through a back window from a deputy. A deputy said, quote, this isn't a high priority case. Allegedly didn't consider it a crime scene. Is that true? What are you seeing from watching body cam in those initial reports? So, you know, um, the initial report was extremely um, detailed. And like I said, she was entered into the system as, as missing. And so all those parts about, you know, the security of a possible crime scene, that's all the stuff that, that we're looking into to make sure that we did, uh, the best possible, um, build the best possible case that, that we could. Sheriff, looking at the timeline, was this a planned out attack? Yeah, it's hard to tell. It's part of the investigation. You know, um, obviously the fact that he had been in her apartment um, earlier in the day, you know, maybe leads us to believe that he had some plan in place. And, you know, I don't know what that is exactly. You know, did he just plan on confronting her or did he plan um, this out? So we're not really sure. But, you know, we're going to try and find those answers for me as parents. Uh, so we were still looking for uh, you know two cell phones, a set of keys, um, all that information. So if people you know find those things, um, you know please uh, call the Orange County Sheriff's Office. What would it have taken to establish probable cause to detain Javier? Well, you know a lot of different things go into that. Um, I think uh, you. Know, you know, getting all of that information. And remember, um, you know, the initial responding deputy, they don't have um, all the information that we have now a week and a half later. So all that, all that takes time. But yes, um, you start to, you start to build a case, you start to investigate and um, you, you, you learn different things about, you know, access to, to apartments. And so, yeah, it, ta it takes a little bit of time, but we have to make sure we have probable cause. Yeah, so so far the information that I've been given so far that the it was a romantic interest uh, that was rebuffed by me. Yeah. In that video with the family attorney, someone says Tati, and he's talking about this employee Tati. Was she questioned? What do we know about that person? Yeah, so our detectives uh, are some of the best in the world, and they've interviewed um, every possible person that has any connection um, to to this case that we know about. Is the only person involved. Yeah, and I'll say it again. Armando Caballero is the person responsible for Mia's death. He's the only person um, that is involved in this case. We're not looking for any other suspects. Um, he is the one responsible for Mia's death. I mean, was Mia Marcano found fully nude when you all? So um, the way she was found is she did have jeans on. Her shirt was taken off. She was wearing a bra. There was a robe um, that was on her as well. Be getting that soon. When do you think that'll be turned over? So remember, it is an active investigation. So you know, certainly you all can put your requests in, but it's an active investigation. Like I said, um, you know, there's still a lot of things that, that we have to do, and so that's why we want to um, give you a timeline of the things uh, that we did. Um, early on. And you know, I will say that, you know, this case, uh, uh, the amount of staffing and the manpower and the hours that, that, that have been put and the resources that have been put into this case are, are some of the most I, I've ever seen in a case. And I've worked some pretty extensive, um, you know, critical incidents. Last thing for me, it says now that she opened up, he opened the door at 214, then maybe again 430. At this point, does it appear he was indeed waiting for her to get off of work? And do you know if she went unwillingly or willingly? So there's no doubt he was waiting for her, knowing, you know, she was going to be coming home from work. And so, you know, whether she went willingly or not, I, you know, I would, I would speculate that she did not go willingly based on everything that we know thus far. Okay, thank you.